Europeans went to places like Australia, North America, or Palestine, not in order primarily to exploit the natives, although they certainly did so, but that wasn't my primary intention. They went rather to replace the natives. They went to become Australians, to stay there over the generations, which is an entirely different kind of formation. The logic of settler colonialism being a project of replacement is first and foremost one of elimination. It's not premised upon exploiting the natives, it's premised upon removing them and taking their place. And this is a profound and fundamental difference which allows us to talk about settler colonial colonialism as a logic of elimination in a quite, quite specific uh, historical sense. Uh, I make one word of caution in, in that regard that uh, people always say to me, but what about South Africa, what about Algeria, these kinds of places? Of course there were settlers in South Africa, in Algeria, in other places that you can mention. That doesn't make it a settler, them as settler colonies in my sense. Although the, the colon or the, the Boers or the white English went to those, those places in order to settle, they did not go to attempt to replace and eliminate the natives. They went and relied upon native labor. They, they uh, established a hierarchy to which the natives were essential in very much the same way. Uh, albeit the proportions were different to a situation like, um, say, colonial India. Thus, there is a difference between, I don't know the word for it, maybe colonies with settlers in them and settler colonies in my sense. I am talking about uh, social formations which are characterized by an ongoing, persistent tendency to drive the natives out, to get rid of them one way or another. Even in that legislation, however, and I want to move on to contrast the African situation to the native one, even in, at that high point of anti-miscegenation legislation, uh, there was an exception that became nicknamed the so-called Pocahontas exception, because the, uh, the fine landowners of colonial Virginia could have been conceivably descended from uh, Pocahontas and John Rolfe and therefore maybe have some Indian ancestry. So an exception was made, even at that high point, of, of uh, racial uh, cleansing, uh, of, of the policing of, of white racial purity. An exception was made for the admixture of native descent. In the case of natives in the US, quite antithetically to the black situation, rather than uh, the case in which, I mean, isn't it ironic that black blood is incredibly powerful, it overcomes anything else, just one drop of it is, is, is larger than any other amount. In the native case, almost the opposite applies. There, any amount of non-native ancestry whatsoever compromises your indigeneity, you become a half-blood or a half-breed or whatever racist term is used, and that feeds through into the modern era, into blood quantum discourse, whereby one's eligibility for being registered as a native is, is mathematically proportioned and uh, diminishes according to the amount of non-native ancestry that's added to it. That, therefore, is uh, strongly to be contrasted with the African-American situation. Obviously, it reflects the difference between a group who are valued for their commodified bodies on the one hand, whose increase, therefore, maximizes property, and on the other hand, a group who get in the way of settler expansion, whose role in the uh, settler project is to disappear, to evacuate the land and render it available for white colonization. And that, that difference between, on the one hand, a logic of elimination, and on the other hand, an exploitative logic of maximization feeds through into the racial regimes which colonizers seek to impose on those populations. So in this very obvious sense, race is historically produced and is a very heterogeneous phenomenon. That's the kind of point I'm trying to make. The management of settler social divisions is rendered fraught in the context of rapid expansion, which occurs both territorially and demographically. Settler hegemony is challenged by the demanding presence of boisterous groups of recently arrived immigrants still undomesticated to new world civic norms. The larger scale immigration that settler expansion requires produces the need for uh, a level playing field. You know, most uh, voluntary migrants uh, arrive in settler colonies to uh, 
realize ambitions that they're incapable of realizing in their homelands. They are drawn by the promise of becoming, you know, uh, self-governing individuals, property owning and all the rest of it. Um, accordingly, they become uh, restless uh, when these aims are seen not to be achievable after all. And in a context of very rapidly expanding uh, demographic complexity, settler governments typically are required to uh, appear scrupulously impartial in their dealings with uh, mixed and shifting populations. In such a situation, obviously you can't just go on shooting natives on site and behaving in the kind of violently irregular manner that characterised the frontier. Yet the requirement for the elimination of native peoples persists. By elimination, I don't just mean the uh, actual extermination of individual human beings, although that, of course, is a very significant feature of uh, settler elimination. Uh, there's a political alternative that needs to be eliminated as well, a sovereignty and a uh, basis for social organisation that preceded the social contract that settlers imported with them and therefore settler constitutions simply can't deal with them, they're extraneous. That alternative uh, source of political legitimacy has to, be le legit has to be excluded as well. So I'm not just talking about the homicide of individual human beings. It is rather the removal of an alternative polity or set of polities from settler social relations that is required within settler colonialism. So in the wake of the frontier, a whole lot of uh, bureaucratic, more genteel kinds of strategies for removing that native alterna al alternative kick in. In the wake of the frontier, with no external threat to necessitate maintaining the formalities of international diplomacy, settler discourse seeks to shift native affairs out of the realm of international relations and reconstitute it internally as a depoliticized branch of the settler welfare bureaucracy. To this end, post-frontier settler policy typically favors assimilation, a range of strategies intended to separate individual natives from their collective sovereignties and merge them irrecoverably into the settler mainstream. In the more genteel atmosphere of post-frontier relations, natives are typically eliminated by means of bureaucratic civic procedures especially, as I said, assimilation. This takes us back to the example of blood quantum, or as the Australians used to say, breeding them white, which is to quote the formula in its more principal version. There are also non-biological strategies of cultural assimilation, for instance, the North American boarding schools and the Australian stolen generations. Multiculturalism is a standard strategy of native assimilation, the intention being to cast natives as just another tile in the national ethnic mosaic. Thus assimilation and multiculturalism make it important to assert the basic binarism of native versus invader. Um, now I don't know how familiar the term binarism is to, to everybody. Uh, by binarism I'm referring to, to dualities, to uh, Manichaean oppositions, polar oppositions, black versus white, night versus day, and so on. The, the, these uh, bifurcated uh, oppositions are what I mean by binarisms. The emphasis on binarism stresses how settler colonial invasion is a structure, not an event. It's not something in the past, a one-off event that's all over now. Rather, invasion persists through a whole series of bureaucratic civic modalities that... that go on after the frontier. In a variety of shifting guises, invasion continues into the post-frontier era, where settler discourse chronically and despite itself re-inscribes the bare duality of the frontier in ways that I hope to illustrate soon.